Hello, my name is Daniel Garcia and I will be analyzing the high G monogatory hand scroll, specifically the burning of the San Hill Palace, which was made in the late 13th century on ink and color on paper. 16 foot 1 fourth inches high and 22 feet 9 inches in length. This painting can be seen in the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston. I would use cultural studies to talk about the culture that was occurring in the 10th through 12th century. The high G scroll is 14 images depicting the night attack on the San Hill Palace. The scroll recounts the events that happened in the 12th century according to learn.bowden.edu. The Hydri scroll was used to depict the events of the winner that was in the war because you aren't going to make a scroll to depict the losing events of someone. You're going to make it for the triumphant victor. One of these scenes in the scroll, which is the night attack on the Sino Palace, also depicts the type of armor that the Japanese were wearing during the early Kamakura period. To briefly explain the Kamakura period, it's a period where the first shogun was established and it was a time of political rebuild. The Highland period was a period in Japanese history where you start to see a flourish in Japanese culture. The Highland period starts in 794 and ends in 1185. The government during this time was dominated by the Fujiwara clan who later had to deal with problems of their own. According to Mark Cartwright who was a publisher for the website ancient.eu he states that during the high on period, the government ran their system as an extensive bureaucracy which allowed them to lead a nation of 7 million people in 68 different provinces. Each one of those divisions was split into 8 to 9 different subsections and a regional government ruled them. During this time, most of the people worked on the fields either for themselves or for someone else. While they were working, they would be taxed extensively. During the 12th century, 50% of the land was held by private owners who were at the same time known as shōin. Many of these shōin were exempt from paying taxes, which in turn caused a debt in the state's finances. Because of this, the wealthy landowners were able to distance themselves from the rich and the poor. The Fujiwara clan was a clan that wanted to keep the vision a real thing because if you look at it, the fact that they allowed private owners to not pay taxes and made everybody else pay them, sh it shows that the Fujiwara clan wanted to keep a tyranny rule. The Fujiwara kept dominating in the government, and they did so by appointing people who they could control. An example of this is when Fujiwara Yoshi Fuzi put a seven-year-old grandson on the throne. The government kept finding new ways to hold its positions. Another way they were doing this was that they would have their sons take over them, but to run, the sons had to be under supervision. This ended up being called retired emperor. The strategy of retired emperors was all about power. Because if you look at it, the Fujiwara are putting children on the throne. So when they grow, they could become part of what's happening. And at the same time, it allows the old emperors to still reign over the people. Using this information, it allows us to see that the culture in the 12th century was based on a hierarchical status and power. The hierarchy status comes into play when you start talking about rich and poor and the difference between them. In the provinces, two groups emerged. Those two groups were the Minamoto and the Taira. These two would play a part in the Fujiwara power struggle. During the 9th century in Japan, there was a process called dynastic shedding. This comes about when the royal family becomes too large and the descendants are sent in different places. In this case, the royal family got too large and the direct descendants were sent to two families, which were the Minamoto and the Taira. The Minamoto were a formidable force who were in wars or fights before the Genpai War. The Taira family was given to Prince Takamune. Taira Masakalo, a great grandson, acquired and governed the entirety of the Kanto district. In 1028, when the Taira Taratsunari tried to reestablish the Taira clan's dominance in the Kanto region, the courts dispatched Minamono Yorinobu to stop them. Three, three years later, Tarasune ended up surrendering. Due to the Tyra clan beginning to decline, the Tyra clan lost Kanto region to the Minamoto family. The former emperor, Shirakawa, called Tara Masamori to help stop the Minamoto family, whose military strength helped the Fujiwara stay in the courts. The Genpai War was a conflict between two rival clans, the Minamoto and the Tyra, for control of the imperial throne. 
In Mark Cartwright's article, he states that there was an armed conflict that occurred when both claimed the rights to the throne, and because of this, it started what is called as the Hojin Disturbance. He also states that in 1160 before the Genpai War, there was another small disturbance called the Haiji Disturbance. This disturbance was because Minamoto no Yoshimoto was jealous at the rewards and the prestige that the Taira clan won. Because of this, he took the throne while Taira no Kiyomori was away from the court. Kiyomori came back and, and ended up killing Yoshimoto, ending the disturbance. These disturbances that occurred between the Taira and the Minamoto was almost like a preview of distaste between both of the families. And in my opinion, it was almost like a judgment of both of these families as well. The, the Genpai War begun in 1180. The fighting began in different places across Japan, and the Minomono family was slowly overthrowing the Taira authority. The Taira court responded to what happened and sent 70,000 soldiers to Mount Fuji to face the rebel army of Minomono. Minomono no Yoritomo had around 200,000 men with him, which made the Taira retreat back to the capital. The Taira clan burned the magnificent temples of Onjoji, Todaiji, and Kofukuji in retaliation for their support of the Minamoto family. There were two defeats at Uji and Seta outside of Kyoto. These two defeats made Yoshinaka commit suicide. According to Khan Academy, the appearance of the samurai in the Heian period began when the imperial court needed to defend the northern Japan states from attacks. The early samurai created a privately known militia called warrior bands. The so-called warrior bands were formed for specific military campaigns and disbanded so the men could return to farming. The samurai in these times were basically used as bodyguards in a sense for most people but at the same time can be used for gathering resources and helping with them. The burning of the Sanho Palace is a vivid representation of what happened in the 12th century. It's basically a symbol of the aftermath of the Genpai War and the War for Power. The fire in this artwork has a nice local color scheme, making it s seem realistic while adding valley to it with the shading of with the shading going on from reds to dark reds and then grays. By looking at the samurai swords, you can see that there was a lot of effort put into this, with there being a small hint of contour lines which are which are represented by the edges of the swords being curved and and also implied lines with the middle of the swords being straight. The artist wanted the whole artwork to be the focal point because the painting doesn't have one thing standing out at you, it has multiple things happening at once. And now one side has more than the other so both sides are symmetrical in that aspect. My artwork I chose to make was a drawing detailing the causes of power. My work was influenced by the Haiji scroll and how it depicts the events of war most notably how it depicts the samurai, the people, and the palace. I made the artwork have a local color scheme to make, to make everything seem realistic and not too outlandish. I have a bunch of dead bodies at the bottom of the soldiers with disfigured looks because I want to give off the impression that when someone dies in battle, they don't really have the same figure they once had, along with the fact that I want dead bodies to represent the villagers just like how it was in my artwork. I also drew the two men who's dressed as a samurai and the other who's dressed as a normal warrior. The swords are holding the swords they are holding are like the keys to opening the door of power along with the fact that it's also bloodstained, so it resembles the lives of the villagers they took. The mountain I drew them standing on is the path they are taking. When acquiring power it can either be easy or it can be very difficult to acquire what you desire just like how it was for the Minamoto family. The village I drew is supposed to resemble the destruction that came from seeking the power and destruction of multiple lives as seen from, from the bodies underneath the two soldiers. The giant sword at the top of the mountain is supposed to be the biggest thing in the picture and is supposed to resemble the final judgment on who is capable of the power similarly to how the Genpai War was.